The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, this is Danielle Uchatel at Gallery Systems, and today we're going to learn a few things about IIIF, what it is, and why it may be of interest to you. As today's presentation proceeds, please feel free to ask questions by typing into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel, which is probably in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. We'll leave time at the end of the webinar to respond to as many questions as I can, um, but if the questions are highly technical, it may not be a matter of running out of time, but simply a matter of running out of knowledge, and I will take your question to someone else who has a more technical knowledge of our topics, and we'll get back to you with the answers. So let's begin. So what we'll talk about, we will talk about what IIIF is. We will talk a little bit about eMuseum, the web publishing toolkit, and how it provides IIIF functionality. We'll talk a little bit about TMS Collections, the web-based collection management system and how TMS web applications support IIIF. And we'll talk about you. Why should this be important to you? Um, what's, um, what do you need to know? So um, for this webinar, and, and I intend this to be fairly high level, I will not leave you with uh, the ability to implement IIIF on a technical level, but I do intend to leave you with high level knowledge of what this is and why it's important to us. So I have a couple of tables of, uh, of information for you. First of all, what does IIIF stand for? It stands for the International Image Interoperability Framework. What is IIIF? It's a standard for sharing, viewing, comparing, and manipulating images. And the key part of that sentence is that it is a standard. So, um, you know, there are standards for many things. There are standards for archival arrangement, ICIG. There are standards for data interchange, Dublin Core. There are standards for um, all kinds of things. Um, and whenever we at Gallery Systems find a standard, we want to make sure all of our uh, services and products adhere to that standard. The more standards, the better. The museum field uh, does not have nearly as many standards as, for example, the library field uh, where I once worked. They're very good about um, making sure there are standards available for everything. Museums have been slightly less so, but we do. Um, we are getting more and more as every year passes. Now, who is the community of IIIF? This is also extremely important, which is why I put it in the top of the list. The community is libraries, archives, and museums. So this is a standard which came from our domain. It is not a standard that was created by, you know, some other, um, some other field. You know, a lot of digital asset management systems grow not out of the um, cultural heritage sector, but out of, for example, uh, advertising, marketing, um, uh, digital image ma uh, management for uh, rights management, um, you know, news reporting, other fields that are not our field. And for that reason, um, when I go to a, a DAMS conference, what they're talking about only has um, uh, sometimes a very slight relationship to what we do. So the fact that this standard comes from us and is for us is extremely important. Uh, the elevator pitch. So if you were asked by your museum director, hey, I heard about this thing called IIIF. Do you know anything about it? And what is it? Of course, you will now know the answer to that question. The elevator pitch is better, faster, and cheaper image delivery. Uh, it allows you to find new uses for the images you already have. It allows you, users, scholars, um, people who are accessing your collection to compare and combine images across repositories. And it reduces technological uh, lock-in because it's a standard. It's not a bunch of one-off systems, but it's a standard that we can all now read, comprehend, and adhere to. The exciting features. So sometimes standards are not so exciting. They're very important, but not so exciting. 
there are a lot of exciting features in IIIF, which I will show you when we get to the second part of this webinar, which is demonstration of actual websites. So things like deep zooming, manipulating images, annotating images, uh, there's a lot of other things. I'll show you some of them uh, in, in the demo portion. Why do we like this? Because it's a standard, because it's a standard that comes from our domain and because it supports sharing. Who doesn't wanna share? And so sharing is a way of both being able to get information from other sources and a way for you to leverage the investment that you've already made in digitizing your collection. Does it have a pretty logo? Yes, it does. That's the uh, blue and red IIIF logo. So let's go a little bit deeper. What is the most common mistake in understanding IIIF? And I know this because I made this mistake too, and I've talked to many, many others who, who clearly are evincing this uh, confusion. It's confusing the IIIF viewer, which allows you to view images and is uh, in the IIIF standard, and the IIIF data protocol. So it's two different things. The viewer is a viewer, we'll talk about that. It shows you images and does some other cool stuff. And the IIIF data protocol, that's the real, you know, that's the viewer is just the little tip of the iceberg, which you see above the surface, but the IIIF data protocol is this huge thing under the surface that supports data interchange, manipulation, searching, authentication, which we won't even touch in this uh, webinar and, and other things. So I know that, an, uh, so you know what an image viewer is, right? Um, what's a data interchange protocol? It's a standard for moving data from your collection website to somewhere else or vice versa. And it's implemented via an API. What is an API? It's an application programming interface. What does an API do? It just gives you a way to share data in a standard format. In this case, sharing your collection information, both the images and information about the images and information about the objects the images represent, such as the title of an artwork, the artist, and so forth. So when you add the API plus the IIIF standard, what do you get? The data moves from your website via the IIIF API, and the data is displayed in the IIIF viewer. So that's kind of completes the cycle and will dispel any confusion about uh, the difference between the IIIF viewer, very important, and the IIIF data protocols, also very important. So tell me about IIIF viewers because that's that you know portion of the iceberg that sits above the surface of the ocean. How many IIIF viewers are there? At least a dozen, probably more that I don't know about, but I know of a dozen. So Mirador is the probably the oldest and the most widely demoed, most widely known, probably the most widely used. I will be showing that to you. Uh, Open Layers is another, and there are some others listed there, and there's about a dozen. There's, IIIF has a very good website that has all this information on it. So if you just Google uh, IIIF um, uh, protocol, IIIF viewers, IIIF museum, you'll get to the IIIF website and all of this is laid out for you. Are all IIIF viewers the same? No, some have functionality that others don't. So although they all fully support the IIIF protocols, some of them, because the protocols have grown over the years, some of the older ones like Mirador um, support the earlier protocols, but not uh, later articulation of the protocol. So there are some differences. Which IIIF viewer is used in eMuseum? Currently, we use Mirador and OpenLayers. I'll show you a demonstration of that in a moment. But here we get to the beauty of IIIF standard, uh, because there, it's a standard, we could use one of these other ones. If some uh, client wants to implement some of the things I'm going to show you in the demo, and we don't support that currently in eMuseum, it would be very easy for us to switch out to a different viewer. So that's one of the most powerful things is 
since it's since it's a standard that we all now can understand, read the documentation, and build toward and build with a knowledge of, it's relatively simple to swap them in and out. It does no longer require custom programming to implement some special feature which you may want on your website. So that's why earlier when I said it reduces cost, that's basically how it reduces cost. Things no longer have to be invented one-off style now that we have a standard. Um, are images generated on the fly, sort of as you as your viewer browses your collection, let's say you have a million images, as they land on different images throughout that one million, are the images generated on the fly or are they cached, are they pre-processed? This was something I didn't fully understand at first, which is why I'm putting it here. And the answer, it could be any, any or all of these. So um, the IIIF standard does not require that images be pre-processed. It does not require that images be generated on the fly because there are pros and cons for both those approaches, which get into kind of a technical area having to do with responsiveness and response speed and processors. And so the good news is there's a lot of flexibility in determining what of these options meets your needs the best. What else can a IIIF viewer do besides view images? Oh, quite a bit. Uh, you can manage the arrangement of related images. So let me talk a little bit about that. If you are really deeply in the museum world um, and are sort of thinking with your museum hat on, that may seem not to be that important, um, but for the library community, it's very important. And actually, if you look across the internet at implementations of IIIF, the vast majority of them are from libraries, not from museums. And libraries are very interested in keeping things in order, like the pages of a book. You want page one to be followed by page two and page three and so forth. Or, and it's not only libraries, of course, so at the Freer Sackler Museum, for example, they have a fabulous uh, world-renowned collection of illustrated Qurans. When they present uh, the pages of these uh, hand-illustrated Qurans, they want to make sure that each illustration is in the proper order. So IIIF supports that. You can also rotate images. You can annotate, which I'll show you. Play videos, which is part of a more recent um, development in IIIF standards, and do a bunch of other things too. So now that's all I have to show you. And uh, now I'm gonna show you some demonstrations. But since we're probably not going to come back to the PowerPoint, I just want to show you that at the end, we'll be doing a little Q&A to the extent that I can answer questions or defer them uh, to have someone get back to you with more technical knowledge than me. Here's my email address and, and you can certainly write to me. So let's get to the demo. So, Here I have a couple of browsers open, and here on the left I have a link to Project Mirador, which is the um, uh, organizing, sort of the um, supporting organization for the Mirador viewer. I just have two blank slots in the Mirador viewer waiting for my demo. And here on the right I have a, an e-museum uh, demonstration website, not a real website, just one that we use for demos. So I'll show you how an e-museum uh, IIIF um, might be used. So I'm going to go into a uh, package. Let's see. Of course, since this is responsive, you can see that as I resize, everything reorganizes. So that's good. It has nothing to do with IIIF. Just wanted to show you. And so here's the example I wanted to give. So IIIF is appearing in two separate ways on this page. One is this viewer. This is a IIIF compliant viewer, and because um, we know how to implement it by uh, adhering to the standard, it made it very easy for the eMuseum team to include this in a website. And if you are an eMuseum client and want to use some other functionality or some other viewer or a viewer that has some special feature that's IIIF compliant, it is relatively easy to switch one to another. So. Before, these things could take a long time, many days, our developers, they have to figure it out, test it, Q 
QA, write code. Now it's very easy. It's a standard. So here's one thing. This is a viewer. I believe this. If this is not Mirador, then it's uh, the open layers. And then secondly, down here where you could uh, have your links. And one of the links is says IIIF. So the very least I can do is if I hold down my cursor and just drag this over here and drop it into this window at this other website, the Project Mirador website, you can see that the image came up on the screen. I've got information. This is a set of utensils and other things. Of course, all this information came from this record and rights information and links and other things. All of this uh, descriptive um, metadata is part of the IIIF standards. It's not just the image, it's also information about the image. And I can also see the components of this image that are all in the exact order I wanted them, the fork, the knife, and so forth. So it's not just one image. In this case, this manifest has um, access to this bundle of images. So this is another thing you can do with IIIF. One is I have the viewer here. Two is I can use this as a data interchange. And just in case you're wondering like what magic allowed me to drag this over to here and see the image, well, I'll show you the magic. So if I click here, this is the data behind the IIIF icon in this case. This is what we call the IIIF manifest. And all these labels, structures, why there's a quote here and why there's a square bracket and why everything is the way it is, is the standard. So the standard says, if you've got an object title, treat it this way. If you've got an image with a particular height and width, describe it this way. So we don't have to dream it up. We just follow the standard. And then when we drag that manifest into here, this viewer, which is standards aware, knows, OK, I'm seeing data in the structure. I know exactly what to do with it. This part of it is the height and width. This part is the object title. This part is uh, the image, and so forth. Show you. So that's uh, eMuseum. Now let me just switch over to TMS Collections. So this is our uh, browser-based collection management system. And I've already logged in, so I'm here on my, my dashboard. I have some records in my IIIF demo that I'm going to show. So I'll just uh, call up one. Now, this is not a IIIF uh, viewer. It could be. At the moment, this one isn't. But it would be interesting and maybe a future development that we could sort of take out all the, um, all the non IIIF viewers in the web apps and, and put in IIIF viewers, which would make it easy to switch and therefore just promotes flexibility. And you have the icon here. So I'm going to drag that over to this slot. And you can see it shows this uh, object. It will show information. This is the view. It's a Diebenkorn from a particular date. And so if I was a scholar or a user or a casual viewer and I wanted to see these images or compare some images side by side, do other things, that is how I would do it. So again, both utilizing the viewer and utilizing the data interchange of being able to move this data into a viewer uh, standards compliant viewer. So that's one thing. Let me make the screen big and talk about some other viewers. So this is Mirador, um, widely used viewer, but not the only IIIF viewer. Another IIIF viewer is one called Open Seed Dragon. And so this is a scroll. I'm sure it's going to be small on your screen. It's one of these uh, uh, Asian art scrolls. But um, another thing that's supported is deep zooming. So I can zoom in, zoom and zoom and zoom and get really, really deep because these are all tiles and the tiling and the relationship between tiling and the fact that I can zoom in by spinning my mouse wheel is all supported by the IIIF standard. So since Open Sea Dragon and many of these other viewers support this, if I wanted my website, my collection website to support deep zooming and I had high resolution images, I could easily implement that. I wanna compare that um, so I'll compare it to something of our own, something of gallery system. So some years ago, eight years ago, actually, um, before I knew about the IIIF standard, 
might have been around, but I wasn't aware of it, and we were not aware of it here. We did a project for the um, Seattle Art Museum on Chinese scrolls, uh, similar to what I just showed you. And there was no IIIF standard, so we were dealing with the same kind of material, and we had scrolls to deal with, and we had to do some deep zooming, which took lots of customization and lots of developers working and hours devoted to the project. And it also supported um, annotation. So I could click on the English and then see where that annotation is and see a translation from uh, sort of um, uh, ancient uh, Chinese script to contemporary Chinese script. All of that took a lot of effort. And now all of that is supported by IIIF. So if we had implemented this today, this project would have taken just a small fraction of the time it took eight years ago. So that's another benefit the fact that these um, func this functionality that we all want, annotation, zooming, deep zooming, navigation, is built into the standard, no longer has to be uh, delivered to us via the hard, sweaty labor of developers. Uh, let me show you another example. So this is another viewer um, called IP Move Viewer. Not sure why it's called that. But here's a, a demonstration. So here, you know, is a very famous um, Van Gogh, and you can see it here, but you can also uh, deep zoom in. And one thing that's nice here is that there's a little um, uh, scale that you can drag around. So as you zoom, you can see the scale and know that, you know, this the rungs of this chair are five millimeters across, or you can zoom back out. And, you know, that's that's nice, but it's no different. It's, it's along the same lines of what I've showed you before. What's uh, even more interesting, I find, is within the IIIF standard of this viewer, I can compare images. Because I said before that image comparison is not simply putting one to the right and one to the left, but different types of images can be overlaid. So in this case, um, uh, this is from the, so, uh, from the Musée d'Orsay. They have an X-ray, um, and now I'm comparing the X-ray to the color version, and I can make one or the other translucent. So now I've made the color sort of um, fade to the back and the X-ray to the front. Here you can see the telltale attacks that uh, uh, attack, uh, attach the uh, canvas to the frame to, uh, stretcher, and here I can go back and forth which is interesting and maybe I hope is making the wheels of creativity spin in your head because you may be thinking, wow, we have a lot of conservation images that are x-rays. and We have a lot of high resolution media images that are you know, quote unquote beauty shots. We could combine them on our website to let people look at the x-ray and the image overlaid. That would be very interesting. Another thing that's uh, that you can do here because their conservation department uh, produced all kinds of of good uh, content is raking light where you shine a light kind of horizontally across the surface. So here is raking light compared to the color. And if you are teaching, you know, an art history class and trying to explain what impasto is, um, this is the best you know explanation you could possibly get because I can now. Oops, zoom out, I can zoom in, and you know, you can see, wow, Van Gogh really built up this part of the image with this famous uh, technique that he used, and that would help explain it um, kind of in a uh, didactic way to your, to your users. Um, or I can zoom out and see the color. Another thing that they didn't do here, which I, you know, as I spent time pondering this website, you know, there are let me zoom out. There are actually three versions of this painting, as you may know. One's in the Art Institute in Chicago. This one's at the Musée d'Orsay. There's another, uh, I believe, at the Van Gogh Museum. And it would be interesting to have them compare one overlaid to the other, see how they varied, see how Van Gogh you know, did these within, the, within a period of time, what he changed, what he didn't change, would be of interest not only to art history uh, students and aficionados, but I think to everyone. Um, and would make your website very dynamic and participatory. And again, this is all using things which probably already exist in your, in your you know, media archive. The beautiful shot, the deep zooming, 
the information, the content that you can get from the conservators. It's all there. Um, IIIF just allows you to weave it in in interesting ways. So um, that's really all, all my demo. I don't, like I said, I never intended and I'm not qualified to leave you with the ability to um, implement IIIF, but I wanted to give you some uh, food for thought about what makes IIIF important and why it excites me and excites us here at Gallery Systems and gives us the ability to you know, modify e-museum sites more rapidly and at lower cost uh, as, as uh, people um, you know, dream up new uses for this standard. So let me see if there are questions I can answer. Hold on a moment. Um, somebody asked if I'll be sharing these slides later. Yes, the, the webinars are all posted on the Gallery Systems community site, as will be the, um, uh, the PowerPoint. And I'll add to the PowerPoint the link to the IIIF uh, website so you can get all this and much, much more. Um, which image processing tool do I recommend uh, for converting TIFF files to TIFF images? Um, well, that's kind of, out, it's a good question, but it's a little bit outside the scope of IIIF because that's more of a kind of a mechanical thing. Um, first of all, I'm not qualified to make a recommendation. I could probably find out, but that it, it's sort of agnostic to the IIIF standard. There's no requirement that any particular utility be used to create the tiles. Um, uh, here's another good question. Do you need to have TMS collections or can you use TMS and eMuseum? Yes, of course you can use TMS and eMuseum. I just demonstrated it in TMS collections, but um, eMuseum takes is a web publishing toolkit that takes data from TMS or from TMS collections. Um, so yes, IIIF is fully utilizable uh, in both. Um, that's, there's more questions, but they're technical, so I won't even bother to read them out and expose my ignorance. I think you know it already, um, because I just want to leave you with ideas um, and perhaps um, uh, others, uh, we could do a follow-up at some point with a more technical discussion from the eMuseum implementation and programming team about how they manage IIIF. And then that would be a more technical um, uh, sort of layer, but this is the top layer, an introduction. So I hope you have found this useful. I hope that uh, IIIF excites you as much as it's exciting me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all at the next webinar. <laughs>